What's up everyone, this is Eddie from Average Joe Drinks. And I'm Vince, and we're here to make drinks suitable for the average Joe. Just like my dad intended, my dad's name was Joe, and he spent decades collecting over 11,000 drink recipes, and we're bringing those drinks to you. Yeah, and we are Average Joes, just like his dad's name was Joe. And uh, we decided we're gonna test some of those recipes out, pick the best ones, and we're gonna show those to you. So sit back, enjoy, and please try this at home. So what are we gonna do today? I am going to make a classic holiday drink, eggnog. <laughs> and I'm going to make a Quaker cocktail, um, sort of a lesser known but almost 100 year old drink. Um, brandy based with some rum. It's a good one. I think you'll like it. <laughs> On to eggnog. <laughs> so just like most of the drinks that we've, we've made here, the history is always disputed a little bit. But most agree it comes from the British drink uh, medieval times called a posset. And then later on in the 13th century, monks would drink a kind of a posset, a milky ale. They used figs and sherry. Um, eggs, figs, and sherry, those were considered food of the wealthy. So it's kind of contributed or is uh, associated with prosperity. Hence the reason we kind of... we, we uh, it a celebration. It was a celebration. And then in the 18th century, they took the, the word um, nog from noggin, which was a wooden cup, and then grog which is like an, a strong ale, and then there's eggnog and the name stuck. And there's eggs in it too. There is, is in fact eggs in it. So what I did, I made an eggnog, and you can make eggnog, you can buy eggnog, you can get a mix, you can do whatever you'd like to. I mean, there's a couple different ways you can make it. Uh, most of your dad's recipes actually call, call for raw eggs. A lot of raw eggs in cocktails. Yes, which is kind of interesting. Um, I decided to be a little safer, and I made the, uh, the video, and I'm gonna put it right down here, and I will, <laughs> right there. I will go ahead and um, post an additional YouTube video because making eggnog is kind of a big, uh, big undertaking. Involved ordeal, yeah. It's, it's a lot more than we anticipated when we agreed to do an eggnog. <laughs> so basically what I did was I treated it like a custard. So I, I heated the eggs up to 170 degrees. FDA says at least 160 degrees makes the eggs safe. So that's the reason why I chose that to make sure we don't all get salmonella, which would be really bad. So you should do Happy holidays. Happy, <laughs> happy salmonella. There you go. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. So what I've done is um, I've already put my eggnog that I made again down there. I put it, <laughs> I put it in here. We've got five ounces per drink. And then I like to have mine with a bourbon. And I don't want to go too much into the difference between bourbon and whiskey, other than... We'll do a video on it. Yeah, we'll do a video on it, but if you're going to choose something, you want a bourbon's a little sweeter than, let's say, like a rye whiskey or a scotch, so this really pairs well with your eggnog. So we're going to put an ounce of bourbon, and then... Eddie's favorite. He's addicted. My favorite rum. So I've already pre-measured this. I've got 10 ounces of eggnog in here, and we're going to make it like a cocktail. We're going to shake it up just like a cocktail, so it's an eggnog cocktail. So we're going to put an ounce of brandy, oh, excuse me, not brandy, you have brandy. We're going to put an ounce of bourbon because we always make two drinks. Why do we make two drinks? Because we want to drink a lot. No, we make two <laughs> drinks <laughs> because we either want to make friends, we want to give one to a friend. Everyone's happier if you give them a drink, especially in the holiday season. So half ounce each drink, so we're going to put an ounce of bourbon and then we're going to do an ounce of our spiced rum. And we're gonna pour that in here. One thing I noticed when you put the alcohol in here, it takes out some of the spices from the eggnog. So I like to add some of it back in. So I'm gonna add an eighth of a teaspoon per of cinnamon. It's fancy here. Does that curdle it? Does alcohol curdle? Because you, you said it's like a custard now, right? Because you heated it up and stuff. So does it like give you a grainy anything? I've not noticed that as long as you mix it right away. But that's a great question. As you once said, feel free to ask the oracle and we can Google it and we can find out. But that's a good yeah. question. If you have questions, just put them in the spaces below. Yeah, we'll definitely get back on to Facebook, them. on YouTube. By the way, we really want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just throwing that out there, just in case it hasn't occurred to you yet. Just in case you didn't get the message. So we're going to go ahead and shake this cocktail. And there we go. And what I like to do is put a little bit of allspice and a little bit of nutmeg right on the top. Again, as we've said, before you even drink the drink, you smell it first. So we're going to sprinkle a little bit on top there. Now you can do these warm, 
hot, cold, right? Yeah, I mean, you can do them warm. I, I try to warm, I try to cold, I prefer it cold. So that's the reason why we're making it cold. You can certainly heat it up. Um, if you're gonna make the eggnog just like I did in the video there, you can eat it, or you don't know, gonna eat it, well you can, but you're gonna drink it pretty much right after you make it. Drinks so you, you can chew. Drinks <laughs> you can chew. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> and there you go. There's our nice holiday eggnog with bourbon and rum. Cheers. So the spices give you your bouquet, right? Yeah, you can put your nose in there. That's good. So let me say this, it does look like it's a lot of trouble to make. This is so much better than the store-bought stuff, you guys, seriously. So those disappeared, so I guess that means that we're moving on to the next one. We are moving on to the next one. They were I'm that gonna... good. We ate the glasses. Quaker cocktail. <laughs> um, this is a drink that is actually one of those drinks that's been around that you probably haven't heard of. It was created, it showed up for the first time in a bar guide that was written in 1921 by a well-respected barman at the Ritz Hotel in Paris, France. His name was Frank Meyer. And from there, it started showing up in a lot of different drink books, 1927, 1947. Depending on where you look, you're going to find different people who claim the drink. But the earliest version that I can find is that 1921 version. Um, Brandy-based drink. And very simple, just four ingredients. I'll throw those together now. Now, I don't know for a fact, but I'm assuming that the name of this drink is some sort of a joke. The Quakers were a religious group. Um, there are some very famous people who were members of the Quaker religion. And they were also the first religion that swore off alcohol. In the 1750s, they decided that alcohol was evil and they became one of the first ones that, that started telling people not to drink. So, in their honor, we're going to have some brandy and some rum. And, um, the original version of this was made with a light rum, which is actually a very good version of it. There's yes. other recipes out there that are made with a darker rum, like a gold Jamaican rum. Mm -hmm. Didn't think it was as good. We're going to make ours with a spice rum because for some reason, that just seems to make everything better. I think I'm passing on my influence too on the spice rum. <laughs> so per drink, we're gonna go with a tablespoon of raspberry syrup. The raspberry and the brandy is really what's consistent in all of the Quaker recipes. A tablespoon of raspberry syrup, a tablespoon of lemon juice. Of course, we've squeezed our own. Freshly squeezed every time. Which sometimes results in a little bit of pulp, a couple of seeds. Just strain your drink through your teeth and you'll be fine. Should be good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we're going to go with the dark rum. One and a half tablespoons per. And then two tablespoons of brandy per drink. Now this is a drink without a garnish. The brandy actually serves as a garnish in this, interestingly enough. The brandy's the garnish? The, yeah, you know, the purpose of garnishes is to kind of wake up your senses when you, when mm. you hold the drink up to your face. Right. Cocktail glass, very popular in 1920s France. Now if you put a couple of uh, styrofoam eyeballs in it, it looks a lot like the drink we made for Halloween, doesn't it? <laughs> that was a little lighter, that one. <laughs> and there it is, a classic French cocktail named after the Quakers. Um, just for Again, they go into the history a little bit. Winston Churchill enjoyed this in France. Uh, Roosevelt, F. Scott Fitzgerald. There were a lot of different people that actually went to mm. the hotel to have this cocktail. Interesting. So here it is. I can already smell the raspberry. Wow. Cheers. And I guess technically it would be a sour because of the lime juice or lemon juice. Yeah, and the sweetness with the raspberry. But again, it's a good drink. I think. I think the. The spice rum is it any rum drink you have any rum drink that you think is your favorite try it with spice rum yeah agreed let's see what you think want you to drink responsibly please because otherwise it's no fun if you can't come back <laughs> it'll be very sad it would be sad especially if somebody writes for bail money we're not doing it <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed it if you did please give us a like on youtube and if, this, if you have not subscribed yet, we'd love to have you a subscriber. Please also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Yes, and the blog has started. It's at AverageShowDrinks.com. If you want to leave comments for us anywhere, questions, mm -hmm. comments, complaints, suggestions for drinks, we're still trying to weed our way through the whole Bloody Mary fiasco. It's a bloody mess. There's a lot of Bloody Marys to figure out what the best one is. Give us your thoughts on that. Yep. 
Thanks for watching. Thank you.